Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with a 1v1 for you today on Villa Fiore. Playing as an Axis, we have ASD QWE from South Korea, ranked number 85 with the DAC and using the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. And then playing as the Allies, we have the Evil Boiler from the USA, ranked number 161 with the Americans and playing the Armored Battle Group. This match is super fun, like back and forth brawl with both players willing to take a lot of risks and it makes for really fun and exciting gameplay. So I enjoyed casting this one. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, and with that, we're all under the match. All right, everyone. So what we got today is ASDQWE playing as the DAC on the west side of the map here on Villa Fiore. Uh, immediately going, the Italian combined arms getting a Bersaglieri out and now building a crowd shoots in. And then on the opposite side of the map, we have Evil Boiler playing as the Americans, building his barracks. Uh, he's also getting an engineer squad out right away. So, Boiler is someone that I casted a, a match of, god, it must have been like a month or two ago. Um, and he has since really climbed the 1v1 ladder. Um, he's on, getting close to the top 100, so really excited to see how he's brought his level of play along here. Um, and then also, uh, his opponent, we'll just go with ASD, uh, is also a really, really capable player. So, uh, and honestly, the last couple matches that I've casted, a lot of Road to Tunis, a lot of Americans versus Vermont. Um, so really interested in seeing how the DAC matches up with, uh, the Americans on this map here. We have about 10 seconds left for the next Bersaglieri, and so I, I honestly expect another Bersaglieri squad out from ASD. Although the meta, uh, for those of you who uh, watch me play with uh, Ares, is actually to get a mix of Bersaglieri and Panzer Grenadiers out, right? And so the Panzer Grenadiers give you some anti-vehicle utility and scale a little bit better into the late game. But the Bersaglieri, with their sprint when out of combat, are just really, really capable and allow you to spread out the map and do a great job capping. So here he's got... Uh, AC's got his cross shoots in here in the center. And he's got his uh, Panzer Pioneers on one flank. And then Bersaglieri kind of grouped up on the southern side of the map. Rifles, mainly rifles out for Boiler here. Uh, he's got his first squad rifle. is going to prevent the cap by the crotch shoots in. And he's immediately checking grenades, which is a little early. But, you know, if you're expecting to see DAC vehicle play, it's not a bad move. Now we've got Panzer Pioneers dealing with scouts and cover. And Boiler's going to divert his attention, unable to keep the Pioneers from capturing that fuel point. Now the Crod back on the center VP, but Rifles are going to hop in the building here. So they might not be able to, to stop the cap. Oh, there you go. Nice move to push through the building. One more shot on this Crod shoots him, but it's going to back away. And with the auto repair, that Crod shoots him should be fine. <clears throat> ASD already going for the light support company. Again, kind of an interesting decision. I've noticed with my own play recently. You know, I used to really focus on uh, getting tech out as, as early as possible. But what it does prevent is you getting the proper army composition. So I'm interested to see uh, how this affects his like late game army composition. He's got a third squad of Bursas out. And they're moving in here. Uh... You know, coming off the map here to support this engagement. And and Boiler, he's got a rifle squad. Nice flank with engineers. Now the rifles are going to close the distance. God damn it! They close the point blank. Engineers take a lot of damage down to one model. And the rifles, honestly, they might do some decent damage to this one Bursa squad, but they're also going to be forced to retreat here. There's too much infantry. And then with the crowd shoots in in support. And now Boiler getting his third rifle out now. He's going with the infantry support center. And I honestly think with only three rifle squads right now, even with the engineers, he's gonna struggle a little bit to deal with the capping power of three Bersalieri and the crowd shoots in. And you can see the Bersalieri are already sprinting again. You're gonna take the center VP. And this Pioneer, Panzer Pioneer Squad, more than a match for the Scouts, even at the reduced health. So Scouts forced to retreat. Crowd shoots in. It has Vet 1, so he gets this debuff. Oh, there's the snare. Crowd shoots in is done. So yeah, good that the, the first iteration, of the first indication he had grenades was used to kill the crowd shoots in. So good trade there for Boiler. 
ASD gonna get some decent map control here, though. And, um, uses the Bersalieri bolster, which makes sense given that the Bursas are his main line. Here we go. Here's the big rifle push in the center. Yeah, Bersalieri forced to retreat. And honestly, this is smart too, the second squad. He knows he can't stand up to this, the mass rifleman. And now Boiler starting to spread his guys out. Trying to deal with the capping on the north side of the map here. Actually, these Panzer Pioneers, if the rifles end up on their flank, have the potential to drop a couple of models. Yeah, first is quit, so no harm there to Boiler's munitions income. Captain. There he is, capturing that fuel. Yeah, the Pioneers immediately drop two models, pour it on them, used by Boiler, and do some additional damage. ASD's got the flak half track on the way, and so this is the hard counter to the rifle spread. Uh, with the suppression and then the damage, uh, and the ability to suppress on the move, the flak filling is a great counter to heavy rifle play. The one thing I do want to point out is uh, Boiler's given himself several options uh, by having not chosen a commander yet. So I think he's waiting to see what the approach will be here. He's about to see the flak filling. Oh, this captain, yeah, whittled down quite a bit. Two rifles on the flank here, but this is not a good push against this flak filling. Um, I mean, he's got to be able to hear it through the fog of war. Here come the bursts to flank the engineers. Ooh. And there is a mine down, which I like. These engineers at the risk of uh, taking some damage from the bursts here. And retreat. Fortunately for ASD, the bursts hit the mine and not the flak filling. Right. And now an ISG called into the battlefield. So very meta build from ASD right here, with the exception of the, the lack of Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Boiler, even as he gets the motor pull out. Rifles moving through to challenge the bursts on the field point. Another rifle squad forced to retreat by the flak filling. Fortunately, Boiler's got the presence of mind to have his scouts capping the opposite side of the map. <clears throat> Rifles in green cover, not suppressed by the flak filling. Still taking a fair amount of damage. The boiler's got the resources to get. Oh, nice grenade. ASC doesn't see it. This Bursa squad chunked down quite a bit. Oh, rifle squad also takes a bunch of damage down to one mile. And ASC going for the Breda 30s. Oh, this rifle squad is at risk here. A little bit of a late retreat. I think Boiler was potentially working on... Yep, he was choosing his armored battle group. And he's going to get a Chaffee out now, which is a good counter to this flak filling. Captain now at risk here. Taking a lot of damage down to a single model. Chaffee whiffs its first shot. No, oh, but this flak filling is done. There's no chance of it getting away at this point. Yeah, and so this is the downside to relying entirely on Bersalieri, is you just don't have the snares to protect your vehicles like that. So, good trade again for Boiler. ISG here is exposed, but I don't think Boiler sees it. Scouts actually decap the fuel down here. Very cheeky harassment, and then they're forced to retreat immediately. And Boiler's still got a bunch of uh, command points available. The rapid production or fast deploy really helpful in getting that chaffee out quickly. And it looks like ASD's response is going to be the Panzer Jaegers. I like the, the med truck right now. It's just sitting in headquarters. But it'll help the Bersilieri scale a little bit better against the rifles if they're constantly healed. <laughs> this is interesting here. And clearly, Boiler is not worried about mines. Wow, the Chaffee's hull machine gun doing a bunch of damage to these Panzer Pioneers. Down to a single model. And the Chaffee gonna chase. The main gun not doing much, but the machine gun might. Almost. Panzer Jaegers. Oh, he gets a good pickup. Takes some damage from the Panzer Jaegers, but he'll be able to get out. 
So, so far, despite the early map control from ASD, all the trades going Boiler's way. Now he's getting out his own med tent. The enemy holds all victory points. Launch a counterattack at once. And so, you know, if you're ASD, he's got decent fuel. He could go for tier four. But honestly, though, with the spread here and with the Panzer Jaegers on the field, I'd be tempted to go for a, a second black delay. That ISG also uh, going to be really helpful doing a lot of damage. Crystal area shooting at the Chaffee here. here. Neither side really capable of damaging the other. Engineers show up, but they're going to take a bunch of damage from the Bristol area. Oh, here come the Panzer Jaegers in the half crack. I love this. Rifles available to support with scenarios. Engineers knocked out by the Bersaleri. Half-Track takes some damage. Chaffee also takes quite a bit. Panzer Jaegers hop out before the Half-Track's destroyed. And they retreat rather than take a couple of shots at the Chaffee. They're going to take a bunch of damage on retreat here. And ASD going for Tier 4. I don't think the Chaffee... Pushing this is a little risky for a boiler. One, I don't think he's gonna get the wipe here, and then you don't really know what's on the flank. Uh, he really, with his engineers out, he needs to think about getting another squad of them to repair this chaffy. He's floating a ton of manpower. Also, the potential for some IS, uh, ISC upgrades as well. Yep, and that's what he's doing. So munitions surplus, and then the BARs. So his rifles will scale very well against these bursas with that upgrade. And I I imagine that he's eventually going to go for easy A's, but he's going to try to ride this mid-game kind of light vehicle advantage in the trays that he's had. He does need to be careful that now the double Panzer Jaeger on the field. Captain in contact with Bersalieri. Bristolary grenade is actually very strong. The captain retreats, so it dodges the grenade. Now here come a couple of rifle squads. I'm fairly certain are also upgrading BARs with the uh, reduced cost thanks to the munition surplus. On the opposite side of the map, Bristolary and Panzerjägers push off uh, the scouts. But now here, a couple of rifle squads come in. And ASD wisely retreats to Bristolary before they take too much damage. ISG bombarding rifle squad capturing the point. Lost. And Boiler getting a fourth rifle squad out. I like this. I think it makes a lot of sense given that he just upgraded BARs, just got the munitions surplus. That additional map control will help him kind of coast into the late game, especially with this Chaffee support, which is already vet too. Kind of wild to be honest. ASD unlocking the Simavente. Be interested to see. If he goes for the Caro here. He has tier 4 out, so I don't know that the Caro makes sense. I think he'd rather have the strafing run. Board on him. But this rifle squad taking a bunch of damage. Oh, the grenade! Oh, that hurts. Uh, this rifle squad should retreat as well. Now one rifle squad dropping a grenade on the ISG. And another infantry blob pushes off the rest of the area and will push off these Panzer Jaegers as well. Here, riflemen, yep, they decrew the ISG. Excuse me, or I guess it's the light like, disinfantry that shoots uh, in Code 3. I'm still using some of the Code 2 terminology. Uh, Bear Solari just not holding up to rifles with BARs and pour it on them. Take a bunch of damage, force to retreat, and now Boiler's got the cutoff. Panzer Jaeger is in the middle. The harassment on the north side of the map is eventually pushed off. Chaffee idle in base, but kind of makes sense. He hasn't seen any vehicles from ASD, so there's not really a point now risking it to the Panzer Jaeger since they can camouflage. <clears throat> Engineers leading the charge against the Panzer Jaeger. So ASD doesn't lock the Karo, but instead he's going to get a P3 out. 
And at this point, we're at VP parity, and believe it or not, ASD has a much better KD than EVA Boiler, but the big difference are the three vehicles knocked out by Boiler. And here we go. There's Solari trying to cap up this fuel, taking some damage from the rifles. Here comes the Chaffee to add insult to injury. And honestly, without the P3 hits the field, but without a number of upgrades, it's actually going to potentially struggle against this Chaffee, especially with Seek and Destroy available. You know, Boiler still doesn't have his tier 4 out. Oh, rifles get whittled down. Yeah, so he, he goes for a second Chaffee, which... Again, I, I think that's a good counter to the P3 here without the, the tank depot. The two chaffies that seek and destroy can do a lot of damage. Rifles here in heavy cover, uh, inflicting some losses on Panzer Jägers, but also taking a bunch of damage. And so this is where ASD, you know, leaving his Bristoli area in the open, if he at least moved into this crater here, they'd be in yellow cover. And here we go. Oh man. Rifle Squad takes a ton of damage and is just going to get away. Now the both Chaffees grouped up, so if the Panzer III pushes, uh, might be surprised running into the second one. And the... So, that looks like, yep, Captain off map Mortar Barrage called in on the Bursas. They avoid it. And the Captain really not, you know, a real match for the Bursaliere Squad. Captain uses a garrison. P3, though, is there. Yeah, Captain needs to get out. And I like this, keeping the Chaffees in reserve until you need them. Uh, and then trying to swarm. If he can get a double snare off on this P3 and then swarm it with the Chaffees, uh, that'll hit really hard and do exactly what he needs. What? What's the ISG doing up here? With only two models, it's going to get decrewed by these scouts. Scouts push it. Chaffee's going to push now as well, although this is about to be potentially dangerous to the Panzer Jaegers there. Ice G is decrewed. Panzer Jaegers do a little bit of damage to the Chaffee. Panzer 3 coming over, and here are the rifles. But it looks like they're focused on the Panzer Jaegers. And here we go. Seek and destroy his flanking speed. Oh, Panzer 3 bounces a couple of shots from the Chaffees at the start. And so Boiler thinks better of it and backs his chaffees out oh rifles almost annihilate that panzer Jager squad and the asc is almost in position oh they blow up the isg oh panzer Jager's caught on retreat here by four rifle squads this is the danger of harassing when you don't have infantry superiority oh boy one Panzer Jaeger squad down, and so that's a significant blow to ASD's ability to kind of uh, deal with these chaffees. Meanwhile, Boiler is pretty close to getting uh, his tank depot out. ASD's got the fuel for another P3, but not the manpower. I think he needs to try to mass some combat power. Using the Bristoliere to harass? Uh, is a nice idea, but and this is something I learned playing with areas. Sometimes harassing is just not worth it. In this case, he's not necessarily restricting Boiler's resources all that much, but now these bursts are going to bleed, and the one thing ASD really needs is additional manpower. Now, fortunately, they only drop a single model on that retreat. And interesting that he continues to use the Chaffees to counter this infantry harassment, but the Bersaleri have no counter to the Chaffee. It's a little bit of an exercise in futility here. <clears throat> but it, they are killing occasionally, uh, you know, a model here and there. Second P3 on the way out for ASD. Now, Boiler 
Interestingly enough, instead of getting a tank depot, he calls in the EZ-8 with the engineers. Oh man, with the rifle squads, the burst of danger of going down a retreat here. Yeah, there's no way they get out of this. Three rifle squads on a retreat path. Oof. And it's not looking good for ASD here. He's got these two P3s, but he's... He's in a position where he needs to get some wipes, and the downside to the P3s is they just don't have the anti-infantry damage that you really need. It's not like a Brum Bear. You know, almost like a Stug D would be better at dealing with these rifles, but he needs the mass P3s to deal with the Chappies. So it looks like one Chappie will go down, maybe two, but the EZ-8 is going to knock out the P3. Oh, they got to focus the Chappie. Okay, so two Chappies traded out for one P3, but the other P3s got to get out. Panzerjagers on the flank do some damage and then retreat against the EZ-8. Maybe that was a, a misclick? P3 does a little bit of a pirouette. Initially, it looks like it might escape the EZ-8. The EZ-8, though, has the full accuracy on the move. Ooh. And now, ASD calls in a Karo to try to deal with the EZ-8. Here comes the Karo. Maybe he can trade out. First shot bounces. Next shot hits. One more shot and the EZ-8 could be dead. And there it is. So interesting that he used the Karo. Yeah, and he, do he doesn't have Pact of Steel, so it's not like it's necessarily cheaper. But the EZ-8 knocked out. And so now while ASD really lean army composition, uh, Boiler's entirely infantry here. And so there's some potential to mass some vehicles. Boiler's still a couple of minutes away from his next EZ-8. Oh, there you go. There's the artillery cover. And Boiler soft retreats to clear the area. He retreats one spot that's lower health. Yeah, the artillery cover definitely better suited to dealing with team weapons than infantry that can rotate. Well, rifle squad will take a little bit of damage, but not enough to get knocked out. Another Karo on the way out now. So it looks like ASD is really going to focus on getting these Karos out and trying to essentially mass uh, while Boiler is lacking vehicles. Yeah, that's the thing. That easy call-in uh, is pretty expensive. It comes with engineers, but without the war machine, you know, the manpower reduction, building it from the tank depot, if you're going to get multiple easy 8s it actually will cost you quite a bit. Uh, but they're getting an AT gun out now, which now ASC is going to be missing that ISG. The ISG is a great counter to the AT gun. Now, for ASD, he has emergency repair kits, and that's his only upgrade. So that is a good upgrade for the vehicles, the 80 HP plus the ability to repair when stationary out of combat. Um, and at this point, one, I'd, I'd prioritize the vehicle survival package, some additional HP and smoke. Um, but then also the ability to cap with so few infantry. The rapid advance ability for the DAC is really nice. And so rifle's pushing on the Bursaleri, and there's an AT gun in the background here. So as the Karos advance, AT gun's gonna move up. Oh, good. Rifle's getting chunked down by the Karos. Well, one Karo at risk of going down here to the AT gun, it backs out. Oh. But they're not going to pick up the rifle squad. So every uh, standard AT gun in this game does 160 damage. The two upgrades to the DAC add a total of 120 health. So without veterancy, those two upgrades are not quite an additional AT gun shot per vehicle.
Obviously, the M1 not really going to struggle to penetrate the armor on the Karo. They're just not that kind of tank. And here we go. Here's the rapid advance. Ooh. Engineer is not focused, so they won't go down. Panzer Jaeger is acting as kind of a meat shield while the Karos try to chip away at these infantry. AT gun's going to move up. Rifle's on the flank. Is he going about this the right way? He basically needs to keep his vehicles out of snare range of these rifles. Oh, Panzer Jaegers take a lot of damage. Another rifle squad here. This is where the sprint ability is really helpful. Triple vet. Oh, triple vet. Panzer Jaegers go down. What ASD doesn't need is to lose more infantry at this point. There's the Karo. Yeah, yep, another easy 8 on the field. Karo backs away before the snare can trigger. A third Karo now here. Now, I know the Karo finished the fight against the previous easy 8, but I really doubt that Karos are going to scale well against easy 8s going forward. Engineers pick up the Panzerbuchse. There's also an MG34 LMG here. The rifles can't pick it up though because they don't have a weapon slot. And actually, looking at the VPs, ASD really doing a good job of staying in this game. Boiler's going to plant some mines up on that VP. But despite the army composition doing a great job managing the engagements here and really managing the VPs, he's winning on KD. Uh, if you don't count vehicles. <laughs> and, and he's definitely clearly winning on VPs. Uh, Boiler's about to flip that balance just slightly. But he's got a couple minutes before ASD is really in danger of being on the back foot. Versus. Come up to grab the fuel here. And if I were him, I'd focus more on this center VP than this fuel. With the cheap armor that you've got and the manpower upgrades, this plus 5 fuel isn't going to do that much for you. But being able to outmass a uh, boiler is probably the way to go. And the Karos are very mobile. Although he's got them backing up across the map. Uh, they're moving really fast. I think that's the rapid advance. A fourth Karo on the field. So now, Boiler kind of on their back foot in terms of army composition here, which is wild. Captain and Engineer taking a lot of damage. The Easy 8 and AT gun are rotating. But if Boiler's not careful, these Karos will just run right past it. All these infantry and buildings obviously not doing any damage to the vehicles. Oh, there we go. Easy it takes the first shot. One Karo backs up. He's got a mine plan here. He's got to be careful that a shot from a Karo doesn't set off that mine. Karo's focusing on the captain. Oh, Captain White as it tried to retreat. Oh, artillery cover coming in. Sets off the mine. These infantry out of the support range of the Easy 8. And the Karo's doing a ton of damage. Artillery cover also about to land. Fortunately, the infantry on retreat don't take any significant damage. And here we go. The Karo's focusing again on this engineer plus the artillery cover. Ooh. And one thing that ASD's done a great job of is generally backing up his vehicles that take damage but keeping the healthy vehicles in the front. The boiler recognizes he can't really push on this with the artillery cover, so instead you see he's moving his rifles over to take the opposite VP, and I like this move. There's one Karo going to try to contest, uh, but boiler's about to get his second easy 8 Now, this is the interesting thing about the artillery cover, is it requires sight to be effective. It doesn't come with an airplane, so you can't counter it with anti-air, but you can counter it if you force the enemy to move their vision elsewhere. Alright, so ASD reacting to the uh, south VP being kept. Oh, they're out of the circle. Using the Karo to cap the center VP. A fifth Karo on the field. 
second easy aid as well. But the mass rapidly moving in favor of ASD here. He's also hurting on VPs. Uh, yeah, Boiler's in trouble. He's got to... Oh my gosh. The veteran Karos knock out a rifle squad with a joint folly here. These easy aids have to work in tandem. Fortunately, they don't have to worry about snares. These rifles... Oh, good mine. Rifles survive, and now two easy aids. If they can pick up a couple of Karos here... They focus on the engine critted one, knock it out. And the second one with an engine crit is almost certainly done. One more shot. Oh, the Karo shot bounces on the easy eight. So good pickup for Boiler from five to three Karos. ASD's down to two squads of Bears of the area. The Karos will cap this North VP, but now Boiler's got the, ve the vehicle advantage, the armor advantage here. And these easy eights are going Karo hunting. Arrow's just not doing enough damage to the EZ-8. This one doesn't even back out. There we go. A, a third Karo destroyed by the EZ-8 pack. Boiler caps the center with the Engineer. The Karo capping the South VP here. These EZ-8s. What are they thinking? They activate Seek and Destroy. They get too many more pickups. And these Bersolaries have no counter to the EZ-8, no snares. Oh, Bersolaries look like they're going to go down. Another Karo hits the field. EZ-8s don't finish off that one squad, but now these rifles move in. It looks like ASD is just really focused on trying to maintain VP pressure, but he's going to end up losing his entire army as he does so. One triple vet squad of Bersalieri go down. Here comes a lone Karo. If the easy 8 spot it, they can jump it. Now Boiler, he has to get on the VPs here. We've seen so many games come down to kind of a single last second VP push. And those 50 VPs are still ticking away. Uh, easy 8's focusing. On. Oh, there we go. One Karo down, supported by the AT gun in the back. Another Karo down. Oh, man. And these Karos just can't hold up with the easy 8s. There's the snare. The last Karo is knocked out, and ASD throws in the towel. All right, so that is not necessarily the ending I expected, uh, but, but pretty cool and really fun match kind of back and forth across the board. So naturally, we're going to start with a summary of the build order here. Uh, going with ASD, planned as the DAC, Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. So here you see what's essentially a, a Bersaglieri Combined Arms Battle Group heavy build focused on what I call Tier 2, the light support company, uh, into Tier 4, right? So Panzer Pioneer, you get Bersaglieri out, a Kratschitzen, and then two more squads of the Bersaglieri. So those three squads are your main lines. And then from there... He goes light support company immediately into fire support elements. There's maybe an opportunity here to get an MG-34 or a Panzer Jaeger squad if you're worried about American light vehicles. But I think his main goal is to get this flak filling out, which he does. And then he immediately calls uh, the light to symmetry shoots onto the field via the, the half-track battle group, which is a, is a pretty cost-effective. Um, gets that out, uses the flak filling to start countering some of the rifle play from Boiler. Gets a med, uh, two and a half ton med truck out, which is really smart. Heal up your bursas, prevent that manpower bleed, right? Gets two Panzer Jaeger squads out. Because at this point, the Chaffee's on the field. So Panzer Jaegers are a good soft counter to the Chaffee. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, then he builds his tier four, his Panzer Army Command. Uh, he, and then he techs emergency repair kits. Gets two P3s out. And then decides against continuing with the Panzer 3s. Ends up building six more of the, uh, or six of the Caro Armato, the M1340 Italian tanks. Um, and he texts rapid advance along the way. So I like his tech choices. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Um, there is value, uh, even with the Bersaglieri bolster and only relying on the Bursas, 
There is some value in the veteran squad leaders where they get plus 25% veterancy and they get uh, minus 10% uh, incoming accuracy, right? So there is a slight buff to your infantry if your infantry aren't scaling well, which in this case, by the end of the game, they really weren't against the rifles. Um, that's a good option. Uh, rapid advance and emergency repair kits are great. We talked about it. Emergency repair kits, 80 health plus uh, auto repair when stationary and out of combat. Rapid advance, the, the biggest thing on top of the speed is it allows you to capture territory, which uh, he had so little infantry on the field that Karo's were his infantry. So that was that was a good smart move on his part. Um, and then, so for Boiler, uh, playing as the US eventually chooses the armored battle group, starts scout, engineer, barracks into three rifles, text grenades really early, um, gets his infantry support center out, builds a motor pool, uh, and goes armor battle group there. I think he wanted the the veterancy and the rapid production. He saw the flak filling, and I think he had the motor pool building before the flak filling hit the field. But as soon as the flak filling does, his rifles are in, in serious jeopardy. So he focuses on getting the chaffy out, which immediately counters the flak filling. It's a nice choice. Um, Texas med station. Uh, then he gets an engi another engineer. He had lost one previously. Um, he texts a munition surplus from the ISC, and then texts BAR. So now he basically gets uh two bars for the price of one uh gets a four squad of rifles out gets a second chaffy and then his end game is essentially three of the easy eight assault groups with an at gun as well um this the second chaffy i think is interesting uh especially knowing he was going for the call in easy eight um we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later uh but uh, you know noticeable lack here of the other isc upgrades um and so what I will say is like the advanced logistics is is nice given he was winning his infantry engagements probably not as necessary survivability again just may in that case it basically guarantee that a single rifle squad is going to beat a single bersillary squad and so that might have helped him a little bit later on in spreading out and and basically keeping himself off of the VP back foot like he was so okay so now, like now that we've kind of done talking about the build or a little bit I want to get more specifically into some of the notes I had for each one of these guys. So starting with ASD, uh, who played really an awesome game, uh, ended up losing, even though with a pretty big VP advantage, just through sheer army composition. Um, so a couple things, right? And, and so the first thing is I don't want to say, oh, well, he should have played more meta, because uh, I think that's kind of that's kind of cheap commentary. And so if we're going to stick with his general strategy, which is like versus... Uh, and tier two into tier four, like what what does he do differently, right? So I think the Bersilieri, they're really good early on. They don't scale as well late, even with the six member uh, and the uh, the Bradham light machine guns. Um, and then they struggle against vehicles because they can't snare. And those snares are not so much about saving your Bursas as you are setting up your vehicle engagements to get trades the right way. Um, and so without infantry snares, you need to dump a lot of munitions into laying mines, which is something he didn't necessarily do. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the other option here, if you're playing against a rifle heavy build, is to go like eight rods or tech into stug Ds. Um, instead, he went the kind of the suppression route, which I think is viable. Um, and so against really good players, they'll find a way to beat it because they just won't bleed units since you'll end up kind of snowballing. But I think the flak filling can be really powerful. The the Panzer Jaegers that he got out were just a little late, right? You need the Panzer Jaegers there with the flak filling. So when that Chaffee shows up, when that Greyhound shows up to challenge it, you can immediately push it away, especially because you don't have the snares on your Bristolary. But the flak filling is a great option for dealing with the rifles because of its ability to kind of instantly suppress. So you move that around the map and, and ASD demonstrated he's got fantastic micro. So... You know, you move that around the map, you keep your, your infantry squad spread out, which you did, and then you use that to kind of twist engagements in your direction. And then now you're putting a lot of pressure on the enemy. You gain fuel control, fuel control and you use that to tech into things later. Um, I think, you know, losing that flak was rough because now, especially late game, at best, a bursillary squad versus a rifle squad uh, with BARs, like it's honestly balanced a little bit in the rifle favor. And so now you're not even going to win infantry engagements. So you're, you're just kind of on the back foot from an army composition point there. And then you can't suppress. So you had the option to, to try to get MG34 out, which isn't great. Maybe get another flak now that you have some Panzergers on the field. Um, I don't mind that, but you need to have an answer to, uh, to the infantry. 
Um, and so it was interesting. He he went in with the the two P threes, which I actually I I kind of liked. Um, he didn't choose Pact of Steel, which only applies to light vehicles, so it would make the Karos cheaper. Um, but he went with the artillery cover. I I think in this case the artillery cover really makes more sense against an opponent that's playing with a lot of team weapons. Okay, so so let's say you don't if you don't go for the artillery cover, you go for the Pact of Steel. Now your Karos are cheaper. And so not only does this help you get that critical mass sooner, the Karos, are, I mean, you saw it did pretty well against the rifles. Um, I, it looked like they were doing better than the P3s. Maybe it was just the volume. Uh, but then you get that extra, extra manpower. So that's some, maybe some additional upgrades. Maybe that's the vehicle survivability. Maybe that's the tungsten rounds. Maybe that allows you to tech for the armored reserves, stall for a Tiger or a Panzer IV. Uh, maybe you just get an AT gun or two out to deal with the easy eights, right? Um, so that Pact of Steel, I think, might have been the better choice uh, with the battle group there. And I, I want to talk about the Karos a little bit. Against the Chaffees, Karos are fine. Um, the Chaffees actually got traded out by the P3, so it really didn't matter. You see the easy 8 on the field, <clears throat> and it's just not a fair fight. A Karo has 480 health. Easy 8 is, I think, uh, at least 720, if not 800. The big difference, though, is Karo's penetration at point blank is 80. The EZ-8 has 195 front armor, which means you're going to bounce more than 50% of the shots you take against an EZ-8. Even with the kind of like Italian passive bonus, which when you have a lot of Italian units together, that bumps your reload. If you're not, if your shots aren't penetrating, you're not doing any damage. And uh, the EZ-8's main gun does 120 damage per shot. So it's four hits. It's an easy eight, so it's fully accurate on the move. Plus, so you can destroy, so you get an accuracy bonus. So that thing's just going to smash the Karos over and over again, which is kind of what you saw. Like, it didn't matter that they were outnumbered. They won every engagement against the Karos. Um, I think if he had flipped the order, if he had gotten a couple of Karos out first and then moved into P3s or gotten armored reserves for a P4 or a Tiger, plus a Tungsten ammo, now you can whittle away at the infantry, but then you have a bigger tank to kind of soak up some of the damage and the attention from the easy 8s or an AT gun in the back to kind of add to the damage. Um, the tungsten ammo bumps you to 100 penetration, which the still is about 50% on the front armor, but it's a, almost a guaranteed penetration on the side of the rear of the EZ-8. So that gives you a little bit of a, a better shot. The other thing that I want to talk about is playing with five or six Karos versus two EZ-8s. That's a really, really tough micro tax, especially when your infantry aren't scaling with the rifles and are going to really struggle to beat them. So Keep in mind, like, yeah, it's cool to have these big packs of vehicles, but if you can't micro them efficiently, if you don't have the APM to move them in and out of engagements based on like which one's hurt, how to get them to prioritize the easy eight that's damaged, you're going to struggle, right? Trying to command six vehicles as opposed to two. Um, and like I said, ASD had really fantastic micro, but towards the end of the game, he was relying on his micro skills to make up for really suboptimal unit composition. Um, and so the fact that he almost pulled it off is like a huge credit to him, but I think that ultimately led to his downfall. Like too many early losses, he, he started to bring it back uh, and just couldn't get there because he didn't have the late game armor to deal with the easy eight. Um, yeah, so ASD, yeah, great game. Um, just so, some notes there about like when to use, I think, uh, the different DAC units. Uh, and then, so for Boiler, um, obviously... He did a, a pretty good job start to finish in this game, kind of maintaining control of everything but the VPs, right? So, like, he won most of the engagements. Like, he had really clean trades. He didn't... I think he dropped a couple of rifle squads towards the end, but but really was doing okay, only losing a couple engineers uh, and the captain. Um, I would have liked to see him get a fourth rifle squad earlier. There's a lot of pressure when you have the fuel built up to tech, but I think a fourth rifle squad would help him deal with the early map pressure especially when you know asd's got three bursts plus a crowd shoots in like they move around the map really fast it's a lot of map presence and that immediately not having that fourth combat out you know unit immediately puts boiler on the back foot a little bit uh, i love the quick chaffy to counter the flak um i thought it was interesting <laughs> that he used the chaffy for anti-infantry it actually proved to be not ineffective using the hull machine gun uh and the coax but still not ideal right so like i mean it's kind of cool like use what you got um and he was actually able to do some manpower bleed with the chaffee i think though good players are going to use mines and snares to punish you for that 
But like if it uh, if ASC had gotten Panzer Jaegers out sooner and they're in a camouflage position, like at some points the Chaffee was rolling out relatively low on health, and a, a volley or two, um, especially if it overcommits from Panzer Jaegers, would have would have killed that and maybe swung the game the other way. Um, one you know counterpoint here, uh, thinking kind of along the same lines, the ISC provides you an upgrade to allow your rifles to lay mines and to lay anti tank mines. And so that might have been really helpful later in the game, right? Because he had that engagement in the middle where he basically smashed most of ASD's army when ASD switched from Panzer III's to Karos. And you start to see the Karos come out and like, okay, if this is going to be the strategy and I've got infantry dominance and I can spread the field, I should just start laying these mines. And so he did He did use mines with the engineers on some of the points and a couple of the Karos got engine crits late, which definitely helped. But if you had that ISC upgrade, now every unit you have on the field is a mine layer. Right. And then you can really start to kind of snowball that and really prevent ASD from being able to drive around using the vehicles to cap. It becomes a lot more dangerous if he's got a mine sweep and he doesn't have any pioneers out. So um, I would just think about that. Um, I thought advanced logistics probably not necessary in this game. 70 fuel is pretty steep. You're playing with infantry, but your infantry are winning all the engagements. Um, I like that he used the munition surplus prior to the BARs. I thought that was smart. Um, yeah, I, I would say like, I got the feeling at some points that your uh, boiler was getting away from the attack map and you can usually tell cause the infantry squads are kind of clumped together. And while that was, Im that's important early in the game to have two rifle squads on a single Bursa, right? Cause you need to win that engagement and then move on late in the game when you're going to win those one-on-ones, um, keeping your infantry spread out might've helped him maintain more of his VP. So he wasn't on such a back foot later right and trying to dig himself out of the hole um from a battle group perspective i think i would prioritize getting war machine earlier rather than rapid production um yeah the flak filling was kind of harassing you um and there's a little bit of weight but like the you know 30 seconds that you saved there with rapid production um you make up by saving all that uh manpower on vehicles going forward and then obviously the that war machine manpower cost reduction stacks if you elect to build the easy eights from your tank depot rather than um uh rather than than call them in and honestly you can eventually get rapid production anyway i just think like that side of the command tree i prefer to see war machine chosen before rapid production unless you really really need it um i think yeah if you do the math if you if you make more than one easy eight the war machine and production, um, it becomes immediately cheaper uh, than the call-in. Plus, you get the additional options for the bulldozer or the Hellcats later if you need them. Um, and then the last thing, and maybe this is a little toxic, but I wish you had gotten a wrecker out because it would have been really cool if you had driven around and uh, repaired some of the Karos, and now the Italians are dealing with their own armor. So, um, no, that's it. I, you know, I, I've mentioned this a little bit in the cast. Um, Boiler sent a game into me, uh, you know, a month, month and a half ago, right? And he's a good player, but he was still kind of figuring out how he wanted to play. And so uh, a couple of missed opportunities, even in that game to close it out early, you can tell he's making such huge progress, um, you know, up to rank number 161 with US, right? And just beat a, a top 100 player in ASD. So uh, it's really cool to see guys like really figure out the game and learn and get better. Um, and so uh you know boy i really appreciate you sending this one in i think it was an awesome game it was super fun to watch and a cast um asd i thought you played a phenomenal game you're obviously uh, a really high level player too with the micro you've got so uh yeah really appreciate it guys um thanks for watching and i'll see y'all in the next one